right, so technically we are live on YouTube right now. So Dean, keep your shirt on. <laughs> down with bulldog clips. Held down with bulldog clips, nice. And we have just posted that we're going live on Facebook, and I'm about to go and go like hardcore SMSing out as well. So this is cool. We're going to test like anyone who tunes into this later on. We're just setting everything up right now, but we are about to go live on. Uh, in on YouTube through Zoom, which is how we talk um, as a team right now and how a lot of people are finding that they're talking these days. Um, we're just going to pump out a quick little text message to everyone. So sorry, everyone, in advance, but your phones are about to light up. <laughs> For argument's sake, with this message is going out to 1,731 people. Um, so we're pretty much almost the government, right? <laughs> um, and the way that we've been able to do that for anyone that's interested at home is we've got a really good CRM that we connect up with. Um, so I've only got people who have got the phone numbers and we're allowed to use it. And I've only connect, we're only sending this out to people who have engaged with our content over the last three months. So we're not sending it. We've got thousands of people on our database, but we're only sending it to the people who have actually engaged with us recently. So it's going to take a little while for that SMS to go out. Um, there's really only not many people watching us live on YouTube, but it is there. And we're just going to have a chat today, guys. So, Chris Mott, what do you do for BidPixel, mate? Uh, I do ads. Cool. <laughs> um, Jay, what do you do for BidPixel? Uh, <laughs> Chief Operating Officer, look after all the boys um, and the girls on the team. We're just going to oversee the accounts, business operations, um, and yeah, all those sorts of fun things. Cool. Dean, besides growing awesome moustaches, what do you do, buddy? I, I also do ads. An ad manager, meaning we make, speak to the clients. Making Keep... ads great again. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Dean, tell me, have you locked your brother who is also housebound outside so that he can't become a YouTube statistic walking across the screen naked or are we going to see something happen? You know what? I thought we'd keep it exciting. I haven't informed him we're live on the internet. So let's see what happens. So for those people watching at home, there is about a 20 second delay for what you see live on YouTube. So if the feed suddenly cuts out, it's because Dean's brother has walked across the screen naked. <laughs> um, so guys, I just wanted to, we, usually, we generally push our content, Jay and I, Chris and I produce content about Facebook advertising and what's working and what's not working. And I really wanted to take today to have a chat about what's working right now, because I don't know if you'll agree with me, guys, but there's probably two sorts of people right now. There is the the chicken little sky is falling down kind of person. And then there is the grabbing coronavirus by the balls and running with it and getting really good results. <laughs> yep. I'd almost add a third category into that. Yeah, what's that? Is, is it the people that want to grab coronavirus by the balls but don't know how? Yeah, look, I guess there's so many businesses mm. right now that just don't know how to capitalize or don't know how to shift and transition into this. Like change management is a big thing and there might be a traditional business that just don't know what to do. So let's have a chat about that right now. Um, if you are watching, there's a few people watching on YouTube. If you are watching, feel free to comment and we will um, ask answer your questions as we see them come in. Um, if you are watching on YouTube, please also subscribe to our channel because that means that we know that you're enjoying the content and we can push out more content like this. So Chris, what's an industry that we've worked in and talked to in the last maybe two weeks that just are completely lost by this, but know they need to grab it by the balls? Uh, I suppose some service-based industries would be a, a strong one. You know, they their business is pro predominantly, you know, outside of a warehouse or a factory and is at people's houses um, and they do have options. They just don't know how to transition their business from a service-based to a goods-based business, essentially. So I had a really good lead come in today, a butcher shop, and it's a hospitality-based butcher shop. So all they do is produce meat for restaurants and they're dead in the water, right? Every one of their customers has closed right now and they're trying to, pivot and shift and i googled them and i couldn't even find any information there's no website the phone number wasn't connected anymore and like these guys are hemorrhaging business right now and a really fast smart strategy of even just getting a website or a google business listing and pushing some content down on social media could save that business and get them selling direct to the consumer um jay what about you what's some industries that you've seen that could do things better right now um 
But it's it's a tough time at the moment. It's a really tough time, um, and it's. I don't know. If, definitely, some industries are doing really well. Um, you know, people that sell online courses are doing great. People, you know, that um, that sell products to help keep kids entertained are doing really great. Puzzles are doing really great. Scott Morrison even said that on the <laughs> latest update about an hour or half an hour ago. Puzzles so Scomo's, are selling. Scomo's <laughs> like even said that jigsaw puzzles are going really well. So quick little prompt: the Melbourne map comes in jigsaw form. Uh, Melinda would love it if you guys want to buy that right now. Uh, she's an amazing customer of ours. So ScoMo endorses jigsaw puzzles. Yeah, so th things like that are doing really well. But the other thing that we're finding is, I guess what you said before, is uh, our clients who are really engaging, you know, they're aware and they're not making light of the situation because obviously the situation is absolutely horrible and a really tough time for, for everybody. Um, and some more than others. Um, but in terms of business, the cl our clients that are really running with it and they're kind of they're pivoting and they're adapting what they need to are crushing it. And that that's including um, clothing. You know, I walked through my lo um, the other day, I had to go to the you know, supermarket and walk through my local shopping centre and everything's shut. You know, all the standard big box, big box brands is shut with very little online presence. So these other people that are ready to go, they're ready to kind of um, embrace, as, you know, for lack of a better term, the current situation are doing really well in it. Um, yeah, cool. Yeah. Dean, what about you? What can you see that could do with the disruption? So we might have some small businesses tuning in. There's a few more people starting to watch this video as we're going a little bit further into it. What businesses do you think could be disruptive? Um, what's your little side business, mate? And how could people find that? Now, this is the era of the side gigs becoming full-time jobs. And this is the era of disruption. So what's something right now? And feel free to sp spruik your little side business if you do want, buddy. But <laughs> what, what can work? How can people find something to do right now? Don't worry, my side business isn't going to become my full time. I'm staying with you guys as long as you'll have me. Um, <laughs> but obviously, well, as with any time, anything that fills a need is is um, popular right now. I just happen to sell raised garden beds on the side. All of a sudden, with all this happening and everyone's staying home and wanting to become a bit more self sufficient, everyone wants to grow gardens. So I started watching Doomsday Preppers last night. I'm going to order yeah. a garden bed off you this week. <laughs> <laughs> Special price for you, David. Special price. Um, we've One seen... for the price of two. <laughs> we've seen office furniture in the same vein really take off um, better than it, than it already was. With everyone's setting up their home business. Um, All right, so... What's the uh, return on ad spend for that office business right now, the company that you're working on? For March, it was 71 point something. So they spent $3,000 on advertising in March and yeah. made what? <laughs> yeah, lots of money. Over $250,000 or something they ended up yeah. making. So even if you don't make office furniture, like imagine if you're a shop fitter right now and you're dead in the water for shop fitting, can you build a flat pack desk that goes out to people as a standing desk at home? And can you get that product to market? Um, guys, as people are watching on YouTube, comment if you want, tell us what your business is and tell us what your struggles are. And we will brainstorm and come up with solutions for you. Um, all right, guys, what about... Facebook advertising as a platform, how is it tracking right now? Is there problems with it? Is there great things to be had from it? Is it expensive or is it cheap? Cheap as chips, bro. <laughs> Two, Two dollar um, CPMs. So $2 CPMs. So for those people that don't know what a CPM is, it's cost per thousand or cost per milli, which is like the, what is that? The French or Italian word for it. So cost per thousand. And usually like print media or TV advertising might be, $26 to, to, to $30 as cost per thousand. So if you pay $36 to get in front of a thousand people, what did you say you're getting CPMs for now, Dean? Oh, around two. I, I haven't, to be honest, I haven't been keeping a close eye on all my accounts, but I just had a look the other day on one of my accounts and yeah, that were $2, $2. So all, if, 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 De if Dean's your account manager, he's lying. He's keeping very close. <laughs> look, <laughs> I'm on the CPMs. On your account. Um, but yeah, like a CPM for $2,000. What industry and how can you in your industry use 
two dollars per thousand people right now to get some amazing brand awareness for some of the cheapest advertising costs ever um chris what are you seeing working um shifting objectives and i like so um you know cpms is a good one definitely cheaper cpms is awesome but what we're also seeing is you know the cost per thousand impressions is coming down which means we're getting in front of more people um, because you know we're not shifting our budgets in a lot of cases in some cases we're actually scaling and we're spending more money um click-through rates through the roof everybody's surfing everybody's window shopping on the internet on on websites and in you know the the data that comes with having the right tracking installed on your websites from cheaper CPMs and higher click-through rates, like now is the time to go berserk with data collection. Um, it's an audience building really, time, right? Hundred percent, you know. Yeah, even yeah. if you have, even if you. Oh, sorry to interrupt, Chris. Were you gonna? No, you're right, Mingo. So even if you, even if your sales have tanked, which is the case for a few of my clients, but they are setting themselves up awesomely for when everything goes back to normal. You know, they they may be having a stop financially at the moment, but the, the content they're putting out there is just real positive, real topical. It gives value to their target audience. Um, they're getting more visits to their website or just uh, more engagement online. They're just setting themselves up as, you know, a po positive people, people who know what they're talking about. Um, so when, it, when we get back to when people do want to spend money again, who do you think they're going to spend that money with? Yeah, 100%. So I talked on an Instagram live this week about 2020 is the age of leadership marketing. And it's, I hate the word thought leader now, it's been played out. But if you can convey truth and, and honesty, whose dog is that? Yeah, sorry. Well, technically not my dog because it's a foster. It's a but, foster uh... dog. Dean fosters dogs, if you don't know that. Dean's got two, two foster dogs that he's looking to foster out or looking for loving homes right now. So Dean... Uh, what's, what's your Instagram handle for the foster dogs? Uh, Barker Rescue, one word. There, there you go, Barker Rescue. If you want a foster dog that barks, go see Dean. Actually, one of them barks, <laughs> the other one doesn't. Um, where was I talking? What was I talking about then? Instagram Live. Instagram Live. So we're talking about like 2020 is the age of leadership marketing and people want a leader. People want someone who is an expert on their field, an expert on their product or their surface, service and that but also ethically tries to get that information out there so a massive amount of top of funnel awareness right now will help you for a middle of funnel sort of education and motivation when the time is right to purchase your product so jay do you want to touch on like top of funnel great extremely cheap click-through rates extremely cheap cost per thousands what do they do with that data while they're building it now what's the next step from there um collect it sort it collect it um, build out audiences whether in order to reuse them later on so whether it's an engage, level of engagement um, that people have had whether it, you know they might have liked a post or commented on a, a post or Instagram or something along those lines they might have liked your page um, they might have been on your website and just visited the website and you know added to your wish list or add to card or you know window shopped so they're all, all audiences that we can build from um, and generate at the moment. And then from there, we can obviously go on and look like audiences and um, a whole range of different targeting, different um, segmenting that we can do there. Yeah, awesome. Um, let's circle back to that segmenting and that targeting a little bit more. I just want to reach out anyone on uh, YouTube right now, comment and say hi, comment where you are, let us know who you are and... Guys, Louise Rawlings asked a question on YouTube. She sells organic perfume, soaps, and aromatherapy products. What can she do right now? Organic soaps, perfume, and aromatherapy products. How can we help her right now? I mean, soaps right now, um, anything around cleaning is, you know, we've all seen what the, the shelves are like at the supermarket um, in the cleaning aisle. Get online sell like organic least you can do is get online um, and post organically um, next to that would be fire up the ads manager put a little bit of budget behind it and get in front of people um, as Dave said earlier get you know get a Google business page up so people can find you online with a website they're probably the first things that I'll be looking at you know what the first home sort of 
made thing that I bought this week was. It was a little thing of sanitizer because I couldn't find hand sanitizer anyway. <laughs> Chris Mott's probably got one sitting on his desk that he's about to pick up right now as well, right? He's making his own at home from what is it, Dettol or something right now, right? Pine Oak Lane. Chris, 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 Chris is carrying around a squirty bottle of Pine Oak Clean with him everywhere. Chris's wife also has an autoimmune problem or disease so he's stripping naked in the garage when he gets home as well but um how louise you've got an amazing range of products that are organic and you've got the perfect target market right now because people can't find it anywhere else and people are still um picking on what they want to buy so getting that information out there hard and fast now and even if it's some top of funnel awareness that tells people why or how they should be finding these organic products even if they don't purchase from you now, you've got them in an audience that you can get back to later. Um, pickle and, mother, and juice. Another really big one just on that one too is be honest and be genuine, you know, in this point in time, you know, because there are a lot of people out there trying to be sharks and take advantage of the fact that they have hand sanitizer or toilet paper and oh. price gouging. And, you know, now's the time to build that initial trust when people need you most so they're, they're willing to hang around for longer. So right. Facebook won't won't even let you advertise anything like mm. hand sanitizer related, like face masks. It's like a blanket ban across advertising anything to do with capitalizing on this misfortune right now. So you've got to be smart about it. Just quickly, Linda Curry, hello from the Gold Coast. Uh, David Whitaker, hello in Melbourne. Um, cool. Um, with the with the soaps as well. Mother's Day is coming up in a month, so chuck a package together. <sighs> Mind blown, right? You've just so Louise, <laughs> I'm gonna go hey, Louise, can you just comment your website URL in the comments and we'll make sure it gets in the description because I'm dead in the water finding my wife and my mother something for Mother's Day unless they want some hand sanitizer, right? Like you've got <laughs> your perfect target market audience is coming up right now. You can get your message out there to males that leave everything for the last minute and you've suddenly got a massive target audience and you can sell benefits on that and what i'd encourage you to do is find the hidden benefits around your product or your service so yes an organic soap will wash your hands organically but what are the hidden benefits of why people would want to buy it and why they need to buy it from you now um what's another business that's doing really well for us right now guys don't have to mention the business or you can shout out the business name if you want, but what's, what's some industries that we're getting really good results for and how have we changed their advertising strategy to make it work? We're getting good results for, um, for some women's clothing brands, you know, the, the mum at home, um, that values fashion at the moment is doing extremely well, like ridiculously well, actually. Um, we're seeing great results from there. I think what there's from, I guess, well, very privileged to get the insights into a lot of different businesses and a lot of different verticals. And one thing I guess we're seeing is that people are still spending money. Um, you know, the, the whole, there's obviously a lot of stimulus packages and a lot of pain at the moment, but because we get, we get to see insides, all the, all of these different accounts and businesses, there is so much money being spent and there's a lot of holes in the marketplace that are right to be filled with new brands, new up and comers. Um, you know, when you have the large brands, you know, the Kmart's or the Zara's or et cetera, who don't have physical stores open anymore, people go online and online stores are crushing it. Very good. Um, what did you find out the other day when we were looking at a couple of bricks and mortar or big sort of big um, name brands. You don't have to name the name brands themselves, but Jay was doing a search the other day. You can use Facebook's ads library to see who's currently running ads. And some of the biggest retailer names in Australia right now who are in financial trouble and the mass media is reporting about their downturn and then they're closing stores. They have online stores, but they're not actually running Facebook or Instagram ads right now. Now mm. talk or about an or Google ads, right? Talk yeah. about an age of disruption where the big traditional brand names, household names are failing to be re as reactive as the mum and dad businesses who operate out of a garage and sell a million and a half dollars of clothing a year. Yeah, I think um, the next six months, well, however long, is going to be really interesting to see what, what's, what level of disruption occurs in the typical retail space. You know, 
people who would have gone in and shopped at Kmart or a Target or a Zara during the week are moving online. So I'm really interested to see which brands, which businesses that are purely online really start to tackle that size you know, and that scale. I think it's going to happen. So it kind of makes our tagline on our whole company right now. It's on the homepage of our website, bitpixel.com, and it is making small brands feel big. So building up these mum and dad businesses who are doing you know, half a million, a million, a million and a half to take on these large companies that can't be as agile in these times. But also we want to help those big brands act small. And social media is just that. It's people wanting to socially interact with each other. And I think Dean, you coined a really good phrase the other week on this, that it's you know, people are on social media to interact with accounts that they're following and the, the content that they want to see, right? They're not there to be sold to from ads. And a really mm. highly polished ad is not necessarily a good user experience on an Instagram feed or a Facebook feed. Yeah. Um, all right, guys, what's a bit of a positive thing? What can someone do in the next week if they haven't already done it to make sure that they are going to sort of have the best sort of um, transition period through this? If they haven't got ads manager, get it whether or not they put any money towards something, get the pixel, install it on your website, start tracking your organic traffic. Just be able to track just, the traffic, right? Just be able to track the traffic because there is so much organic activity at the moment as well. You know, people are yep. looking, like you say, they're, you know, the big players are not pushing hard into the space. People are looking for best of breed. They're looking for Australian made. They're looking for local businesses. They're just Googling, Googling, Googling. Um, and they will hit 100 websites, you know, before they even realise it. Yeah, so like I've got a, a good friend of mine, Richie, who runs a, a fabrication business. So generally fabrication businesses would not think that they can sell products online, right? They're used to selling face-to-face, -face, phone on phone conversation. Richie's fabrication business, we fired up $5 a day worth of advertising for him. And currently he's getting like 160 times return on ad spend. So for every $1 he spends, he gets $160 in return. And you know what the massive thing is? He sells five, six, seven hundred dollar products, right? So he's literally spending sixteen dollars and making thousands upon thousands of dollars in sales to a market that he's never advertised to before and a market that he's never got in front of before. And he hasn't followed some secret recipe of advertising. He's just got on there and the ads are written in his voice, their photos taken from a phone, and he's getting that message out there to someone who's never seen it before and people are buying, right? People are buying hand over foot. Um, another industry that we're seeing doing really well is home improvements right now. So Jay, what's some businesses in home improvement that could really go gangbusters with some advertising? Um, plumbers. <laughs> you said the other day, didn't you? <laughs> block, block, blocked <laughs> toilets, block toilets, plumbers. Yeah. Yeah, I, was, I honestly listened to the radio the, the other day and um, it was a local council talking about cleaning their drains out and they're finding towels and you know hand towels and uh, material cloths and carpet being flushed down. You know, so you're in a bad <laughs> place if you're having to clean carpet. with carpet. So <laughs> if you're, you're a plumber... You are ripping and, up carpet. Um, yeah, but we, people should be buying shares in plumbing companies. But that's not financial advice. Okay, so uh, how can how could a plumber right now capitalize on this? What what would be the simple steps that they do to make sure that they're getting in front of people who are flushing carpet down their bloody toilets? <laughs> Super simple. Have a website. Number one, fire up Squarespace, Wix. Just a simple website builder. First, and then get a Google page, the like Google Business page. Um, third thing, on your website, install a Facebook pixel. And then fourth thing. Yeah, and that comes hand in hand with having a Facebook page and then capture people there and then run some ads, run some ads locally and sign them and drive them to say a calendar booking. So you just automate, automate your leads. So your calendar is booked out week, days, weeks, months in advance. So use Acuity, use some sort of scheduling platform, use um, Trader Mate, use anything that's like there's, yeah. built, there's platforms built for your industry. But so if you know a plumber, if you're watching this or if you watch this later on, if you know a plumber, get them to just watch this little section because a well crafted ad, like you put a picture of your high pressure water blaster pipe cleaner thing that you drive around on a trailer, which sits underutilized for 10 months of the year. You put a picture of that 
on Instagram and on Facebook right now and put some really crafty wording behind it. And that thing is the wheels are going to fall off and the bearings are going to collapse because it gets used so much in the next couple of weeks. Um, Righto, home improvements. Uh, what did our creative director, Paulie, buy and get delivered the other day? Mulch, was on that wasn't it? Big mulch. Good mulch, yeah. Landscape mm. suppliers, right? Like you all have trucks to deliver out products. Putting some ads out there while everyone's stuck at home. I am getting thrown so many honeydews. Do you guys know what a honeydew is? Mm. Honey do this, honey do that, right? <laughs> I'm getting thrown so many honeydews that getting a couple of cubic meters of mulch or a couple of cubic meters of crusher dust or blue metal to fix the driveways and the paths. Like that's the perfect time to be selling that product. And it could literally just be a ad of your truck because your truck has the business name and the phone number on it, the side of it. And, and add a picture of your truck saying what products you can deliver and a phone number. 5K radius around your business, done. Mm. Say something funny in the ad, call out the husbands, call out the wives. It's probably the wives that are going to be the one purchasing because they're not the ones doing the bloody manual labor shoveling it. But landscapers can get a massive, massive market share right now. And if anything, build an audience through this period as well. What other industries for small business could be disrupted, guys? I need two air conditioners repaired right now. So air along the same lines as, as the plumbers, I guess. But everyone everyone's at home all of a sudden running their air cons all day suddenly. Everyone's at home running the air conditioners. Uh, I know very well from the colour of the curtains behind Chris Mott that he's sitting in a customer's <laughs> office that sells solar systems for a living, mm -hmm. right? Um, <laughs> solar companies right now, imagine the bills that everyone's going to start getting from air conditioners running, pool pumps running, but more uh, just the heating and the lighting and everything on the fridge opening 10 times more than it used to open. Power expenses are going to go up right now. How can a solar or an electrical business capitalize on this? And knowing that people are tightening down their wallets as well. So how can you present that message that it's going to be cost effective to put a three and a half or four thousand dollar solar system on your roof now to save money in the long run what else is there don't we cover a fair bit at the moment it's great mm. that's like 30 minutes worth of time i was going to cut this at 30 minutes actually i wouldn't <laughs> mind i wouldn't mind doing this every day or so just having a chat like we've had some good comments come online there's some there's we've got people watching right now guys people like you um <laughs> but look I guess what the final encouragement would be don't be that chicken little business. Don't think the sky is falling. Spend some time <laughs> to make sure that you advertise your business and market your business because it's a fantastic time price wise. It's a fantastic time to adjust your messaging and it's a fantastic time to just unite with Australia, right? Um, one of you said before Aussie made products. It's, you know, mm. it's, it's that time, right? Australia is going through a bit of a shift and Australia is going through a bit of a disruption, which is going to, ultimately change how we operate in the sense in a lot of senses right chris have you got anything that you want to finish off with yeah i think the biggest thing for a lot of businesses at the moment you know is just all those ideas that have been shelved for the last two years take them off the shelf everything's fair game you know all the ideas that you put up put to the side because you just thought they were rubbish um now's the time to bring them out and see how they operate so chris and jay do you have youtube open at the moment are you watching it on youtube no, as well no no I try Dean's, and avoid watching myself. D, Dean does not. Dean has just got on there and commented, commented is that Dean guy single? He is cute. So, <laughs> hey, everyone watching, Dean is single. He loves to ride mountain bikes. He fosters dogs. Um, Dean, what's your, what's your final, final closing moments, right? Do you want to give out your phone number or your street address or something? <laughs> no. Um, man, it's hard moving all dating to online, let me tell you. But we're not here to talk about that. Um, nah, stay positive. Uh, if you're not um, smashing it sales-wise and if you can't see a way to do that, give your um, target audience something else of value, even if it's encouragement. Uh, Dean at bidpixel.com, ladies, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Jay, what's your final bit of encouragement for small businesses or big businesses or anyone who's the sky is falling in on right now um reach out for support reach out to other business people in you know in your network or you know people that are 
you know, might be complimentary to you, reach out and just see how, how they're going and, you know, have a chat. Um, sometimes having that extra set of eyes from the outside might be enough to spark an idea that enables you to pivot and adapt somewhere in a way that you haven't thought of yourself. Yeah, very cool. Um, mm. Cool. Let's wrap this up. I'll first say my final thing, even like childcare right now, we've got actually Jay, another Jay, who's one of our good customers is sharing the office space here at the moment because he's displaced. Um, I was talking to him this morning. One, ScoMo's just announced some amazing things for the childcare industry, which is going to help Jay because he owns four childcare centers. But two, already last week, Jay had talked to Chris and I about running a campaign now to build his audience and get an audience database out there. So around all of his four centers, he knows that people are unenrolling kids at childcare centers right now. He knows that people are pulling their kids out of childcare centers. It just so happens that Jay's got four amazingly renovated centers, which are beautiful, but they were running, you know, one center was brand new and it was running at 30% occupancy. He's using this time now to put some brand awareness ads out there and he's gamifying that a little bit. And we might share how he's done that in a, an upcoming episode, but he's building an audience data set now so that by the time everyone's ready to go back to childcare centers, he's top of mind, he's the first person they're going to think about and he should get the 100% occupancy before the other centers around him. So guys, how do you shift your mindset? How do you shift your thinking? How do you adjust and leverage and pivot? And don't use the excuse of you can't afford to advertise right now because as Dean said, you can be getting in front of thousands of people for literally one two three four dollars right like if you're smart about it it's an amazing time to be advertising chris jay dean thank you very much guys we are pulled this off we've had people watching consistently the whole time we've pulled it off josh was hounding me asking me to produce some content to get out over the social media platforms the next couple of days so the three of you just helped me do that um <laughs> If you've got any questions, if you're watching at home, if you're watching this afterwards, or if the teams cut this up and it's all on Instagram and Facebook, ask some questions in the comments. We do read every single question that we get on our social media channels and we do try and answer those in a fairly timely manner. Um, ask your questions in the comments below. Reach out to us, dean at bidpixel.com if you're a single woman in your... Uh, I don't think he's picky, right? Any age bracket works. Um, <laughs> And definitely we'd love you to support our YouTube channel by subscribing to the YouTube channel. You'll get notifications when this goes out. Uh, I did send out 1700 SMSs to people before we went live on this. So I'm sorry if you're offended by that, but we kind of did get your opt in before we did that. So um, thank you for those that tuned in. We're going to do this a little bit more often. We're going to maybe make this a bit of a normality if I can lock the boys down and steal some of their time. So Thank you, gentlemen, and thank you. Let's get back to making money for some people. Thank you. Definitely. Cheers. Thanks all. all. See you guys. Bye.